Welcome to Coffee with Democrats, a sensible platform for progressive conversations. Coffee with Democrats is a grassroots movement dedicated to hearing from Democrats, candidates, legislators, and friends from all political backgrounds who want great conversations. Coffee with Democrats is committed to increase Democrat voter registration and Democrat voter turnout by making voting more exciting and meaningful. And now here's your host of Coffee with Democrats, Kevin Dawson. Hey, good morning. We are on Coffee with Democrats. Today is a wonderful day, a special day for us on Coffee with Democrats. We've got two exceptional um, ladies that are going to join us today who represent their co-founders of an organization called Good Change, Emily and Becky. Um, thank you for joining us on Coffee with Democrats. I mean, it is just so special to have you on with us and to be with us live and be able to, to talk to us about your your company that you have and how important it is for uh, for candidates and, and people who are wanting to be involved in uh, in uh, Democrat races to do fundraising. So good morning. I'll start with Emily. How are you doing this morning? Doing wonderful. Thank you, Kevin. We appreciate y'all having us here. We're honored to be a part of this. And and uh, and through transparency, and this just shows how stupid I can sometimes be. I can remember Emily Wyman, but I can't remember Becky's last name for nothing. And I'm looking through all of my notes trying to find Becky's last <laughs> name. I can't find it nowhere. So Becky, would you please introduce yourself? I will. I'm Becky Pittman. Pittman. There it is. All I had to do is look at the screen, right? Yep. That's it. That, yeah, I was going to okay. say that, Kevin, but I uh, I, I didn't want to stop you mid, mid meltdown. I was I was right in the middle of I'm looking at my notes, so I'm, I'm not always looking at the screen. But I am so excited to have both of you on here. We do have some housekeeping that we really need to get involved in. Notice how I changed that subject, moved away from that so fast. That good transition here. So anyway, um, we do have some housekeeping that we really need to, to talk to. And this is for our listeners. Everybody who is listening to this, please share this conversation with all of your followers, with all of your friends, with all of your families. Anybody who is in your district who is running for Democrat, send them this link so that they can watch this and learn from this link on how this fundraising is such a hard, I mean, it's a huge uh, part of of their campaign they've got to do it uh so uh here's where we are you can find coffee with democrats on twitter live on facebook live and on youtube live uh, those will be at the on the credits at the very end of this video you'll be able to see exactly where we are i'll just go through it real quickly on youtube live it's at sign coffee with democrats 7998 facebook uh, live, you can find us there on Facebook by just going to Coffee with Democrats. Uh, so far, we're the only ones, just Coffee with Democrats. And on Twitter Live, it's at sign Coffee with Dems, just Coffee with D-E-M-S. You can find us there. And uh, um, and again, like I said, again, we'll make sure that on our, our closing credits, uh, you'll be able to find those links on where uh, where to find us. But please share because it's so important. Uh, this is such a great conversation. So again, Emily and Becky, thanks for coming on Coffee with Democrats with us. It's so exciting. And through um, some transparency on my part, the first time that I met uh, Becky and Emily was on Saturday. And we just struck up such a great conversation with one another. And they um, said that they had today open, and we said yes, we want to do something. And I I extended the invitation, and and to my surprise, I was shocked that they were like, yeah, let's do this. And I was just uh, amazed at that because they they want to get the word out, and they're they are so passionate about what they do. So this is coffee with Democrats. Um, before we do that, let's back up, Scott. We've got some uh, some transparency here. We need to talk about how you know both uh, uh, Emily and Becky. I think it was about a year and a half ago um, that we met at an, at a, a, an ASDC conference, which is the Association of State Democratic Committees. And I was so taken with both of you. Um, part of it was the Arkansas connection because my daddy's from Arkansas. But part of it was just the 
what I thought was the brilliance of the way that you all were thinking about fundraising, because honestly, we this time of year, we're all hearing about everybody at the top of the ticket. But the but the reality is each one of us is going to have a lot of choices in November. Mm -hmm. And that means that the people that we'll be voting for need all the help they can get. And so I was when when um, when I learned that you were going to be with us today, it was just, it was really exciting because fundraising is the hardest thing for anyone to get their head around. Even people who have been doing it a long time have to 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 take stock of where things are, to to examine the landscape. And you all have found a way to kind of break through that. So I'm I'm delighted that you're here this morning. Thank you. That's so sweet. We um, and we're we're honored to be here and just huge fans of of yours too, Scott, and and yours, Kevin. So thank you. Well, you know, Coffee with Democrats, we got started out of that necessity of being with fellow Democrats and being just like when I was a youth and Scott was a youth growing up. And we would go into the donut shop or the coffee shop. And if you do it repeatedly, you see the same group of people that are over in the corner of the cafe or the corner of the donut shop. And it's the same group of people sitting around the round table. And uh, in some good, wonderful times, you get to hear them yell at one another and, and talk about how they're going to change the world and, and how their decisions and conversations. But it's all centered around having a cup of coffee. And, and and so when I got started with Coffee with Democrats, I just put out a, a request to have people meet me at the local coffee shop over here so that we could have coffee with one another. That's how we got our name, Coffee with Democrats. And uh, so with that in mind, we can't go a day without finding out what our guests are having for coffee. So uh, Emily, I'm going to start with you. Would you please talk to us a little bit about, you know, find out what your coffee or coffee substitute or your morning, you know, beverages that you you go to first thing in the morning that gets you up and going, and then also what you constantly do, you know, throughout the day, what you constantly have at your workstation. <laughs> okay, you're about to be. I'm about to scare people right here. I have a problem. I have actually a very serious coffee problem, and that's not pandering. Uh, that's actually true. Becky can testify. She walks me chug about a pot of coffee every morning. It varies depending on what's in my pantry. I prefer to shop local. I'm just that that human. So uh, typically I like Milo's or West Rock if I have my first choice because those are both Arkansas based coffee brewers. Um, West Rock Coffee is a wonderful Arkansas based company if anybody wants to check it out. Um, however, I'm a working mom. And so sometimes just Dunkin' Donuts like a big giant tub of it gets thrown in the car cart and I just I'm kind of a goat. I wish I could say I had a refined palate, but I will just about drink any coffee as long as it's very strong and like extremely dark. Oh, you like it. You like you like the hardcore stuff. I like the hardcore stuff. Um, I'm not playing, not playing about politics and fundraising and not playing about the amount of coffee or the strength of coffee. <laughs> do, you, do you drink it straight up black or do you uh, put anything no. in? This is where I'm a wimp in high maintenance. It's it's skim milk and one Splenda. Just okay. a little sweet. Okay. Yeah, I think I got to take the edge off just a little bit because we're Democrats. We're sweet, right? So That's I gotta, right. That's <laughs> right. Just a bit. So Becky, what about or what about you? What What's your first thing in the morning, your go-to drink first thing in the morning, and what's your beverage of choice throughout the day that you keep at your workstation? Well, like Emily, I have a caffeine problem. <laughs> I have a I have a terrible caffeine problem too. Um, and my day doesn't get started until I have my third cup usually. Um, and it just kind of depends on the uh, level of activity through the day if it goes beyond that. But um, there is no sweetener. There is no skim milk. Oh. It is sludge. And it needs to be thick, like dark enough that nobody else really wants it. That's how I really like it. So yeah, very dark, very thick, black, nothing added so you're you're one of those um um and please i'm going to say this in a very dark way but it's i mean it very kindly you're one of those that likes to to freebase coffee yes that's, <laughs> that's right if i i mean and sometimes it's like coffee 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 all day and then you know maybe i'll have a glass of water right right but i'm like well i've got to hydrate i gotta do something other than just coffee through the day but 
Well, I'll start first before Scott, and then we'll turn it over to Scott. Um, I have my my coffee cup here. My uh, my my coffee of choice is Mac Cafe. I I keep those uh, uh, K cups. Uh, keep the pantry stocked with them every day, and I'll sometimes I'll just do one a day, um, and then there's other days like today. Um, I tell you what, I was so excited about coming on here and talking to you guys. I've had three cups of coffee already this morning, and you can tell by listening to me that I've had three cups of coffee already this morning, too. So, <laughs> so Scott, what are you drinking? Right now, I'm, I've am i switched to, to just plain ice water, which will be my go-to the rest of the day, because I start the day with two quarts of iced coffee, which I brew the coffee the night before. And pour it over ice in the morning with just a little splash of cream. Um, so two mason jars of that, and I'm pretty much said. I love it's a mason jar. That's like my favorite so, part of the details there. It's in a mason jar. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and it's always, and, and knowing Scott, it's always washed impeccably. It's it's sanitized, I'm sure, before he ever uses it. So I, I'm I'm glad to. Scott, I've had too much coffee already. You can tell by listening to me, can't you? I can't. I can't. <laughs> you're, you're like really wound this morning. Well, I tell you what, it's because I'm excited about good change. And I'm excited about the co-founders, Emily and Becky, coming on here and what they have to talk about. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, I want people to meet what good change is and, and what they're about. So good change is the intersection of responsive financial technology and advocacy through fundraising, combining the latest FinTech or financial tech and financial management innovations with proven fundraising strategies. Good Change provides the power to reach, convert, and engage new and existing donors with ease. This is something that candidates need to have. They need to be able to make it easier on themselves because they can't do what they need to do without money. And that's what this is all about. Good Change's cutting edge uh, fundraising platform leverages financial technology to give fundraisers control of their finances and speeds transactions with digital e-wallets to raise, hold, and distribute funds. Good Change donors take control of and manage their own contributions and enjoy the most flexible ways to donate, including spare change fundraising. This is a different conversation today. Instead of us asking the questions and driving the conversations, Coffee with Democrats, myself and, and Scott, we're going to turn this over, to, turn the reins over of Coffee with Democrats to Becky and Emily from Good Change. So they are going to have the, the conversation now. So please, Emily and Becky, please lead on. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for that introduction. Um, Becky, do you want me to start? Yeah, just, you go for it. Just interrupt me when I start putting my foot in my mouth, okay? So um, in good change, like you said, yes, we're an online political fintech company for politics. So we raise, hold, and spend your funds all in one place with three new revenue streams. Uh, the first is a spare change roundup, as you described. I can't wait. to. I'm about to tell you how that started. And the other two are relational fundraising tools at scale, things Becky and I always used to do, but we never had the digital tools to make it easy for everyone. So let me let me dive just a little deeper. We How did good change start? So Becky and I were the only two professional Democratic political fundraisers in the state at the time, way back in 2018 when we first met. And misery loves me. So we I, became forgot, I forgot to mention you are in Arkansas. Oh, yes, we're in Arkansas. I'm sorry. Yes, we're in Arkansas. So we were the only two professional political fundraisers for Democrats in the state of Arkansas and Misery Loves Company. So we became fast friends um, and we would go to lunches and talk about the woes of, you know, how do you raise money for Democrats in such a deep red state? And one of the one lunch I showed up. And I told Becky, I was like, I figured it out. I'm a genius. And she goes, oh, my goodness, what'd you do? And I said, I took mason jars, OG Scott, and I slapped stickers, political campaign stickers on mason jars and handed them out in a small town, which will remain nameless, for a state rep race. I had the state rep race and we couldn't raise any money. 
people, call time wasn't working, emails and text messaging were expensive platforms that this campaign couldn't afford. Nobody would show up to an event because nobody wanted to be outed as a Democrat. And so we had to get creative. We had to think about something different. So we took mason jars, called them angry jars, slapped a sticker on them, handed them out from the uh, county headquarters. And we said, every time you see, read, or hear something that makes you angry about state politics, take everything less than $5 in your wallet, billboard, folder, purse, whatever you carry, and throw it in the jar. And at the end of the month, we'll have like a potluck or a bonfire or something, and you show up and you give us give us the funds. Um, the campaign raised all the money it needed, um, somewhere around $20,000, nineteen dollars to $20,000. Wow. And it only paid $25,000 for that, little, that state rep race. And it did it in just a few months. And so I'm, I come to lunch with Becky, and I'm like, I'm a genius. I've done it. <laughs> and Becky, I love her so much because she keeps me so humble, and she said, it's you're a dinosaur. It's called a spare change roundup. And they do this everywhere, <laughs> all over. <laughs> and we should do this for politics. And so then our wheels got turning and we started writing down all the other things that we would do as fundraisers that were out of the box, that weren't just emails and text messages, weren't just phone calls. You know, how do you really amplify a political, how do you really amplify a house party? How do you really give a finance committee and all their bundlers tools in order to know who's actually giving money to the candidates and causes they support, but also to have the ability to maybe have some friendly competition? Mm -hmm. um, we used to do finance committees and we would have moments of recognition or depending on the finance committee, maybe moments of shame and fame where you'd show who brought in the most money every month, right? So a good change, we created a bundler tool where different bundlers can not only have their own marketing links and as many as they want to go raise money for the campaigns and causes they support, but also have the ability to pull their own reports. So if I ask Becky to give $100 to Kevin for president, I can actually get on there and see if she used my link or not. But then even more fun, Becky and I can compete to see who brings in the most donations, not the most dollars because we're Democrats and a donor is more than their donation. Every donation has value. Every donor has value. And so it's able to put people who are young Democrats on the same playing field as storied donors and givers who always give. And then the last thing we do, um, the second relational tool is influencer fundraising or affiliate fundraising. So individuals who are motivated, but maybe don't have the capacity to just be a straight volunteer, or maybe they already have their own creator space and network, they can go and raise money for the campaigns and causes they care about and make a small commission off of it. And what that commission is, is none of our business. That's between them and their relationship with that campaign or cause. But it's a wonderful way to empower, especially young people um, who are influencers and in that creator space to speak out and advocate and raise funds for the groups and causes they support. And I just said a whole lot of stuff. So I'm gonna yield to Becky, sorry. Also had a lot of coffee. Yeah, we're 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 caffeinated. No, that's 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 amazing. And um yeah, sort of that, you know, good change was was born out of um the just the struggle that we were having as uh you know, two people in the state trying to help as many people as we could. There wasn't really the bandwidth, um, you know, it's, there's not bandwidth to help to do to do everything so we're you know we really wanted to find a way to just do more um and really you know some stuff that that we saw over and over is like some of the folks you know that we go to church with or go to you know uh pta or or whatever you know them and their parents they're getting these crazy text messages crazy emails um some of them are signing up for recurring donations they don't realize it like you know so we really wanted to focus on relational fundraising on how to build out fundraising networks so that people don't have to use those tactics that are terrible ta terrible tactics get away from the terrible tactics um but additionally they're just tactics that don't work for you know down ballot candidates there it's down ballot candidates you have to start with you got to start somewhere you have to lay brick one right so um so how do we how do we help people do that um and that's a big part of you know it's why we why we built good change with the leader boards and all that good stuff because 
We want people to build out committees, want them to you know grow from the inside out, grow their fundraising uh, programs from the inside out. You got to start with the people around you and expand. Um, and any other way is really just not doable. You know, it's you can't get somebody else's list and call from it or I mean, you can, but it's not going to produce anything. <laughs> If if I had ten dollars for every time a state rep or state senate candidate came to me and goes, I'm going to hire you because I'm going to get your list, and I look at them and I say, I have no list. Every list belongs to a candidate, and we don't buy share share or sell data. Um, and Good Change does not buy sell or share data. But like Becky said, all all the down ballot races, especially these candidates would come to me like, okay, I'm going to put a thousand dollars of personal money in, and we're going to go by Barack Obama's list. And you're like, no, you're not. <laughs> not at all. Instead, we're going to make a Rolodex and we're going to start with the humans, you know, and even those awkward conversations with family members who, you know, were Republicans, um, you're going to be the first Democrat they voted for. Congratulations. It's a prize winning moment right there. And we're going to naturally grow your list. And when you get your Rolodex put together and your people are engaged, we're going to call those people back and instead of asking them for a second money, which we'll probably still ask them for a second round of money, we're <laughs> also going to ask them to uh, tell us three people that, that you don't know so that you can naturally grow and expand your network because we are Democrats. We're big tent people and we have to bring everybody in. And no, the, the thing I Kevin probably heard me say this three times on Saturday, nobody in the world is insulted because you thought they had money. Everyone in the world is insulted when you think they're poor. And so when you go with that mindset of I'm not asking anybody to give anything they can't and anything they don't want to, I'm giving people the opportunity to be included in something bigger than themselves, to be included in their democracy and their representation in this moment, an opportunity to engage our community in conversations about real issues that matter. And so that, that's kind of our approach with fundraising is it's granular, it grows from the inside out, and it's an opportunity to engage and bring people together, kind of like coffee with <laughs> kind of like that. Say, say it again, Becky. No, oh, I said kind of like that. <laughs> what one of the the dark, scary places I think for most candidates has to do with um, compliance, mm -hmm. because you know you you've got someone who perhaps has never even considered running for office. They find themselves in a situation where they are determined to make positive changes for Oklahoma or Kansas or wherever they happen to be, but they don't know where to start. And oftentimes for smaller campaigns, there just isn't money to hire a lot of campaign professionals. How do you handle the compliance piece for the contributions that are received? Sure. On gun change, um, we have fully dynamic reporting. Uh, so they have all of the necessaries for FEC compliance, which generally covers most state compliance. And if you need additional information, Becky and I have this crazy idea. It's called customer service. And so people can call and email us anytime. And they do. Um, even now with 169 clients, uh, we still personally answer emails and phone calls. Um, but our reporting, to answer your question, it includes employer, occupation, street address, first name, last name, donation amount, date of donation, and other details, email addresses, phone numbers, other things that candidates want. But uh, Scott, you bring up a great point. Beyond just pulling a report and taking that CSV and downloading it to your CRM or using one of our webhooks or taking that CSV and uploading it to the Secretary of State or Ethics Commission website or FEC website, one of the things I always used to encourage my clients to do as a consultant is not only attend trainings and not only read the laws to make sure that you know what you're doing, but to maybe get a volunteer bookkeeper who can just help you with your day to day, both expenses in, expenses out. And make sure you utilize simple tools, even if it's just like a Google sheet or an Excel sheet to keep track of money. But most importantly, ask questions. Don't just think that you are alone on a ship trying to send and upload this report, or if you have a paper report, go file your paper report. Mm -hmm. Every ethics commission officer or attorney that I know or staff person that I know welcomes questions, appreciates mm -hmm. questions. And when they see that you're making your best effort, it leads to a lot of forgiveness if there is a mistake, like if they forget a contribution or forget an expense or can't keep track of something. And so 
making your best faith effort to file a complete report because you've asked necessary questions or to make an amendment where you see that they're as fast as possible when you see there's a mistake. That's really there all, all there is for compliance is everybody just making their best effort to be as transparent as possible. Yeah, and if it and it's it's also important like if if the if a worry about compliance is a thing that stands in between somebody running for office and um not, you know, they're state party, county party, I mean, there are so many resources out there, you know, the laws vary from state to state, obviously. Um, but like Emily said, if it's if people are doing their very best faith effort, um, you know, if you make a mistake, don't panic, just fix it. You can call an ethics, you can call your, you know, the ethics person, talk them through it if you need to if it's if it's a situation like that if you have a question you can't figure out the answer i mean you know if you're if you're doing your best and you're transparent and you're you know trying to do the right thing that will come through and don't just don't panic just fix it um but with good, good advice change, thank you yeah yeah um one other thing about the relational and just kind of fundraising in general and we, you know, this is something that is pervasive across the entire industry. There is such a shortage of campaign staff and talent, right? And it's because we had this kind of conversation in Oklahoma this weekend. It's because so much of these campaigns, so much of the effort is uh, volunteer. It's volunteer work. Um, there are so many dedicated volunteers that it's absolutely amazing to have them. Um, but also, you know, people are really underpaid in this industry. They don't, it's very hard to make a living, um, doing this work. And, you know, for some of the folks who have, you know, young, the young people who are not on three, you know, three pots of coffee a day, um, they have a lot of energy, but they can't, I mean, their time is very valuable. They can't, um, just volunteer all their time. So that's why we went with the, um, affiliate slash influencer fundraising because we're like you know we we need to start retaining more of these talented people and these people who are passionate about helping and compensate them better for their efforts um and helping jump in with fundraising and kind of you know sharing that work is a really powerful potential potentially powerful way to get there for a lot of campaigns. So um, we really looked at that as sort of a way to um, compensate people more, you know, in such a way that they'll come back and do it again. Um, and then- it's, I think that that is the most important thing that, that you can underscore for viewers is we should never have a campaign volunteer that we so overwork that after that one campaign, they wash their hands and say no more. We okay. want to incentivize them to stay in the process, work for another candidate the next cycle. Consider running yourself. And, and what you're describing is a way to do that. And I think that that's, that's every bit as important as raising the money because you're, you're really raising talent at the same time. Yep. Yeah, and, and starting here in May, and Becky's may give me looks when I say this, starting in May, we, we um, because the affiliate and influencer program that we've started is really taking off with our tools for the wallets to have them paid in real time and easy. It's like a closed loop Venmo type system. Um, as that's beginning to take off, um, we're going to start hosting just general trainings to help those volunteers and those influencers and affiliates learn how to actually be effective in politics because making an ask for a political campaign is a little different than making an ask for a charity or anything else because you know when you say give money to St. Jude's um, a wonderful organization everybody knows what that means right but when you say give money to a political organization everybody comes with their different perspectives of wh where they think the money goes and, and there's two points here one is that there's in especially a state senate and a state rep or even a statewide campaign they are the most local businesses you can support um they hire local caterers they hire local 
liquor stores and grocery stores and everything else for their catering for their events they hire local staff and young people fresh out of college or maybe still in college they work with local union print shops hopefully if they're democrats they're using all union stuff they're using local web designers to set up their websites and get things stood up um you know we're honored that um in Arkansas, all of our candidates are support, supporting a local women-owned business by using Good Change. Um, and Oklahoma and other states too, you're still supporting a locally based fintech company that's owned by women. Um, and so it's a really, when you get down to like what political fundraising really does, oh, and I forgot media, supports local news outlets, supports local radio. It, it's a wonderful way to really boost and, and generate income and economy into your even to your communities. Um, and the second point is we also teach them how to make the ask, how to really get past yourself, kind of like we were talking about earlier, you know, every no, but getting past the fear of the no, getting past the fear of talking about two things we're never supposed to talk about politics and money, but also to know that an ask is not just, hey, Scott, I need 10 bucks. <laughs> I, need, I need 10 bucks because Becky's running for governor. It's instead, Hey Scott, could I please have ten dollars because Becky's running for governor, and we need to buy mail mailers for flippable seats, and we need to place the order by Friday. So an ask is an amount with a purpose and a timeline, and it's really thinking through how to make it relational, how to be transparent, how to make it a process where you involve people. And so we're, Becky and I are really excited. We do webinars all the time, um, just putting out basic fundraising tips trying to help people get past their fears, uh, trying to help you know, with campaigns and these advocates, the space in place to have the resources they need. I, that's a terrific service because I think that even those of us who have been doing fundraising for many, many years, decades, there still has to be a shift in thinking before you make an ask. Right. And and there's always a bit of anxiety that goes with that. And so someone new to the prospects of fundraising, particularly in politics, I think that the tools that you're providing are, are really very smart and very helpful because the more people we can get to work together and the more fears we can set aside, the stronger we become as, as Democrats. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And I, I also like if you have a finance council or a group who are fundraising together, um, not only do we like when people use our leaderboards to see he's bringing the most donations, a fun side project that we'll never automate because we don't like to be negative and it's kind of a negative twist on it. But we also like to see who has the worst thing said to them because that's also fun and it takes the sting out of it. And I encourage them not to share names of who said the bad thing because then that's gossip. But um you know, having taken that sting out and knowing that rejection is part of it and just accepting that before you start the ask, uh, it also it, it makes it a lot easier to keep going. Because most of the time when people say no, especially if it's a person who you know supports Democrats and you know supports local races, it typically has nothing to do with the person asking or the candidate. And it's something personal that the individual is going through that they don't want to share. And honestly, they don't need to share. Um, most of the time, a no is a, is a personal statement and um, empowering, especially volunteers to be able to work through that process and get through the no and to be gracious about it um, is also a very important thing. There's also I, I know that you had some specific questions that you wanted to ask as well. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, to just yeah. ram Ron through here, but I was so taken by what Becky and Emily were, were talking about. And I just think it, it's really an exciting opportunity. No, no, I'm, I'm so excited to have them on with us. And I'm just taking notes as we move along here. So Becky, you were getting ready to talk there and I wanna give you that opportunity to get the stage is yours. Oh goodness, I'm sorry. Um, well, okay, so, I, you know, one thing that I kind of, you know, Emily has worked on, has been on a lot of congressional campaigns um, where the reality that you have to raise money for it is accepted right off the bat, right? Um, but down ballot, sometimes it's really tough for brand new candidates. Um, they don't want to ask, they don't want to ask 
their friends for money. And especially the people that we really want to run for office, we really want teachers and firefighters and, um, you know, people who are not just I love lawyers and bankers and 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 that kind of thing. Like, but you know, we need if we're going to have a, a a truly diverse um, legislature and uh, bench of people serving, then it's you know people from all walks. Um, and a lot of times, if you don't have that you know big money network, um, they just don't. Want, they do not want to ask. They don't want to ask folks. They don't want to do that stuff. And they think I'm going to go do this without you know, raise the money on PR. It's a very, on PR alone, um, like I'm very, I'm always in awe of people who are starting out like that um, because, you know, I'm like, you're going to go climb Everest. I hope that that works. Um, but the reality is we, you have to have money to connect with voters. you got to have money. Um, Emily and I sit here and shout into the wind about stuff you know benefits of good change or whatever else we feel like we've said it to everybody a million times people i mean like the reality of what it takes to break through um and really you know impact how people are thinking about things it takes so many touches it takes so much communication it takes so much it takes money to do it um so you know if it's mailers or digital buys or or whatever else so i you know really encourage anybody who's thinking about running for office um it's sometimes people just feel icky about it they don't want to fundraise but it just is the reality of you know of where we are and um reality of our system and it takes money to communicate so um i just wanted to kind of interject that yeah and I'm, I'm glad you did yeah when it's not about the money it's still about the money sorry i'm dead inside i get to say things like that um but it's completely true and it, my tip for anybody who's thinking about running for office who may be listening is to create a really good rolodex really start with everyone in your sphere and then take a step out to acquaintances maybe social contacts and others and to when you make that rolodex do do two things one, make a source column on that spreadsheet of how you know the individual. So that way, because when you get in the habit of calling people for money or engage, talk, speaking with people for money, sometimes you forget the context that helps you really relate and connect to the person and bring them back in. Second, do not go hunt out random bits and ways to contact them. If it's a person you email, email them. Email them directly from your personal email. If it's a person you text with, text them. If it's a person you only call, call them. Don't make it weird and stay yourself. That's really the trick to political fundraising is if you're a tax accountant, suddenly don't try to become a Baptist minister. Stay who you are. And when you're on the phone with people, if you hate asking for money and you're calling and asking for money, call them and say, I absolutely hate this moment. This is the worst part of my day. I have dreaded this for hours but I'm calling you and asking you for $100 for mailers for flippable seats by Friday because it's important. It's the only way we're going to win. And I need you and I see you and I know you're one of my people. So come so, on this journey. Uh, uh, what's your ahead. email address? I'm going to send you a check right now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, there's something that strikes me about this and it struck me on Saturday and it continues to strike me today. And that is that the young people that uh, are in attendance to our conversations that are just now getting to the point where there's like, yes, I'm ready to run. We're talking about the 20 something that's ready to run. We've got some candidates here in Oklahoma that are fantastic, but I guarantee you, there's gonna be a couple of them out there who are gonna say, what is a Rolodex? All right, here's the answer, okay? You go to your phone and you go to your contacts I don't know if, uh, did it disappear? I think it disappeared. It disappeared. All right. of you did. It was a magic trick. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so go to your contacts and that is, that is the modern day Rolodex. And if you need to create another one that just is your close friends, that is uh, those people that you know, uh, that you want to invite to, uh, to give money, um, this would be like the Democrat side of your contact list. Mm -hmm. Those people are Democrats and you know they're Democrats. 
that's the part of the Rolodex that we're building. That's your contact, your new contact that you're building. Mm -hmm. I hated to date us like that, but I'm old, I'm ancient, and I have to constantly think of, of what is going on with the youngest people that are joining our group. And when I, when I heard Rolodex, I was thinking, I know there's somebody out there that is not going to ask that question because they're going to be offended. But for those of us who lived through the 90s and saw the demise of the Rolodex, we know that it's important that that was a functional tool that we could not live without that has been replaced by the contact list in our phone. So mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry I interjected. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm glad you did. That's that's a very good point because uh, um, my freckles are youth camouflage. <laughs> and so when I was a senior in high school, my mom actually bought me a Rolodex, like the kind you spun. Yeah, and yeah. And like halfway through college, I got really cool. And this thing called the Palm Pilot came out. Right. And I bought right. the Palm Pilot. Becky's like freaking out that I'm aging myself this hard. But that was, that was a big birthday present. It was a big deal. Um, but no, great point. Yes, it's just a list of your contacts. Um, and it's just an organized way to keep it. And you don't have to buy any fancy software. You simply just need to open an Excel sheet or a Google sheet if you're going to share it with other people. Yeah. And, you know, another thing, and I just thought about this. Um, another thing, one, one thing that got me really, it always gets me more comfortable or in the mood to fundraise if I had sit in, whenever I sit in with call on call time with somebody else who's doing it and just, you know, somebody else who's a seasoned fundraiser, who's an elected official or something like that. And this is, I'm kind of, you know, going off on a tangent here, but if there are any folks who can, you know, find a mentor kind of around them, I mean, Emily and I are here, like y'all call us, we'll train you, we'll give all kinds of unsolicited opinions, we'll yeah, I, I already did it twice this morning, um, called somebody with fundraising advice that they didn't maybe need. But um, but at any rate, you know, being around people and seeing how people do it, successful people, how successful fundraisers are, are doing it, um, you know, is so powerful because it's I mean, we're we're saying we're giving people a lot of technical kind of um, the science of it, but the art of it is uh, a little squishier, right? It's like there's an art and a science to everything, to fundraising. Everybody's campaign is going to look a little different. Everybody's going to have a different um, feeling for it. Uh, my great grandma used to say that all kids were born with their own um, uh, instruction manual. And that's kind of the way that campaigns are. It's like none of them are the same. None of the committees are the same. But if you can see how somebody else's is doing this work in action, doing it well, um, you know, it's that you see it, if you see it, you can be it kind of thing. It'll help give um, ideas and help, you know, make it more comfortable because um, you see how people are re responding and reacting and you can really have fun with it. There's no, it doesn't have to be, um, and it shouldn't be like this, you know, stressful, anxious thing. It should be a fun thing that is um that people can feel whenever you call them you know it should be i mean it's serious work it's serious but it can be serious fun like there's no reason that it has to be all doom and gloom and stress and terror like ha go have fun with it too bring people in in that way Becky, that, that's great advice and I, I would just like to offer that um some places that people might find opportunities to just sit with someone else while they're doing call time your state parties are going to be a great resource, as well as House and Senate caucuses, mm -hmm. uh, wherever you live. Mm -hmm. uh, if you you are determined to run, um, chances are good that they will welcome you and will even connect you with someone who can mentor you through this process, at least at the beginning. So mm -hmm. excellent advice. Thank you for sharing that. Any other questions for us? So one of the things that I found so fascinating about your presentation on um, on Saturday, and I don't know whether this is a good time, time to change subject, but it, it still falls within the fundraising, is the transactional part of it, uh, of fundraising. That is the actual, <clears throat> the actual process. I mean, there's so many different ways to do that. But one way that, that you talk about is opening your house up and having a, a uh, I don't want to call it a house party, but, you know, a fundraiser out of your house. And, and the way that you guys described some of the ways that you do that 
it was so exciting and it was something that that really drove me to say hey look we got to talk a little bit about that because more people need to start engaging in some of these activities because going door to door and knocking on everybody's door that's one way of of getting your name out there but that's not going to be the fundraising part of it the fundraising part of it is more you know you it's that gathering place where people can gather together and and support one another mm -hmm. yeah the the house party and i don't mind calling it a house party or house fundraiser is really making a return um it's always been one of my tips and tricks i've always used um you know if i have a congressional race i hope that they're having at least one house fundraiser a week if it's a state rep race it's more like once a month state senate's more like every two weeks or every three weeks because you want to keep them frequent enough that if somebody missed it there's another one to go to but not so frequent that you start having a declining return in attendance but the real short simple secret sauce for it is you start with a host they agree to open their home and remember their home is their home it doesn't matter if it's a big fancy five million dollar house or if it's just at normal human house or an apartment or a condo or whatever they have um you be you and just you opening it up is the gift. Uh, the second thing is co-host. So it's that host and the campaign or looking and saying, OK, what common friends do we have who can be a co-host and listed on this invitation and help provide at least half of the fundraising goal and help bring a certain number of people each? And I said bring, not invite. And from there, from your co-host and your host, you should have half of your fundraising goal met before the event happens, and you should be guaranteed a big crowd before the campaign pushes it out on their own, on social media and email and text message and phone calls and everything else. And remember, it takes three touches to get people to show up. The first time you're invited to somebody's house, you think about it, you're flattered. The second time, hopefully it's somebody else inviting you or you're seeing it from a different uh, source point, you're really encouraged. The third time you're checking your calendar, you're hiring a babysitter, you're rearranging your plans, you're doing whatever you have to, you're gonna be there because FOMO's real. Mm -hmm. And the trick for the house party is just have a big open gathering, what, however you wanna do food, however you wanna do beverages, that's that's your choice, your call. You know, I have some houses that are teetotal and there's no alcohol. I have some houses where I have to remind them to um, bring food. <laughs> and so, and I've had, I've had, big bonfires and fields that have giant, um, that are giant potlucks where people bring things. And I've had fancy dinners where people have past hors d'oeuvres and wait staff. There's no right or wrong answer. The real truth is just bring people, include them, and make sure you're not just inviting the normal suspects. So most of oh, I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, Becky's gonna have to leave here in just a couple of minutes. I yes. wanna give Becky an opportunity for the last couple of words. Emily, I hope you can stick around with us for a little bit longer and okay. then we, we, we can close down with you because you've got a great story about what you did with your uh, the, a dog. Okay. So, okay. Becky, please. Oh, well, I just appreciate y'all having me on um, with Emily. Emily I, I want to say um, just that I'm very grateful uh, to be in this space, to be doing this work. Um, I never thought that I'd be fundraising, you know, for a living or anything like that, but it's such a huge gift. Um, and the best part of it is just getting to meet all the wonderful people like y'all and and the and the people who we get to meet through um candidate fundraisers because um and just through this whole, you know, through the whole um, progressive movement. Um, but it's it's just a huge gift to be able to to connect with other people. And that's what the fundraising is all about. So thank you guys. Yeah, we're gonna Becky, let you it's go. Great to see you again. Yeah, so good to see you. Becky. Okay. Great to see Bye, you, but we're we're gonna really get into Emily and have her have her talk about the website here in just a little bit about how people can access sure. that info. So it was great having Becky on with us, but again, uh, we understand how conflicts happen. It happens to everybody. So we we yeah. we're gonna we're gonna move on and and again we're gonna try to close this down. But there's a couple things yeah. that I want to talk about before we do that. Number one. You've got a great story that I heard about you were getting ready to do a house um, fundraiser and and it really, you know, everybody has these foibles, these these th like I'm not going to open my house up because I got dust on the mantle. I'm not going to open up my house because I've got to get a new carpet. My my my, my carpet has been soiled or whatever. Um, and and so you, you've got a great story to, to tell people you get over yourself. And, and and open your house up anyway because it's not about that it's about the people 
Yeah, exactly. And and that's and that's precisely it. We were honored. Um, one of our very first clients on Good Change was the Progressive Arkansas Women Pack, or called Paw Pack. Look them up if you want to. They're a wonderful group of trailblazing ladies. And um, when they heard that we were a women-owned business trying to shake up politics and get people talking about fundraising and politics again, they were like, "We're in. We're fully supportive." And so they, we were. I was talking to one of the leaders a couple months ago, asking her how Paw Pack was going, like outside of what I knew from being their fundraising platform. And, you know, she was like, we really want to expand our reach. We want to expand our network. We need some more people. And so Becky and I said, no problem. And we'll host an event at my house. It's nothing fancy, just a normal house with a normal backyard. And we'll just welcome you over. So we did. Uh, we did not do the co-host thing because they wanted new people to come in. Um, personally, I am very anti meet and greet. Actually, a meet and let me amend that. A meet and greet is a fine thing to have. It is not a fine place to ask for money. Right. Do not make switch people. If it is going to be a fundraiser and you're asking for money, tell them. So what we did was we did a hybrid. We called it a meet and give. And Becky and I were the two co-hosts and we each had our own QR codes with our own different links. And so we made it a friendly competition. We invited a slew of people. We started six weeks in advance and we hit it hard. I mean, we had a Google sheet. We just each took our Rolodex from our phones and we threw it in a Google sheet and we tracked who we were inviting and we hit multiple people multiple times, made sure that we had a good crowd. Um, we wound up with with a really good crowd. Um, I did a final head count after Saturday, by the way, Kevin, we wound up with 57 people walking okay. through my house, which was a wonderful, wonderful crowd. Um, I finally did all the analytics on it. I finally had a moment to take a breath because we did it Thursday night and then Friday morning we were on the road for Oklahoma. But things that happened, um, one, my Great Dane ripped a hole in my couch the night before the event happened. So what I do, just threw a throw on it, just threw a blanket on it, pretended like it wasn't there. No big deal, right? Nobody notices the dust bunnies. Nobody notices anything like that. So we had this wonderful group of women come through. Half of them had never been to a political fundraiser before. This was their first time. And most of those people, when we asked them and we introduced them to Pop Act, um, they liked the idea that it was more of an organization and less of just one candidate and having to choose favorites. I'm sure Oklahoma may be a little bit like Arkansas, everybody, somebody's cousin. Um, and so it was a wonderful organization. Um, and so they just wanted to learn more about it. And they had never been asked before. They'd never been engaged. And it was a group of women in their 30s and 40s. And we were just honored to have them there. But what Becky and I did to make the fundraiser part come out that was a little fun was we used Good Changes leaderboards. We each had our own link. We each had a QR code. One, they were just literally a piece of copy paper that we put on a piece of cardboard to make look nice as a little tabletop easel thing. We made it look nice. And one said Team Becky and one said Team Emily. And we were tacky. I mean, we were just rude to each other the whole night. We were like, are you my friend or are you Becky's friend? And like, I would push down her QR code so nobody could scan it. She would hide mine somewhere. Um, but some people, only gave to me, some people only gave to Becky, some people gave a little bit to both, but it was a wonderful, friendly competition and it kind of took the awkward out of it, right? And another thing, now on the food and drinks, and this is gonna make me sound cheap, but just forgive me for it. It wasn't fancy. Um, I made a pitcher of Arnold Palmer's, I made a bunch of sangria, I had water out and we made a big cheese board. Becky made a couple of cakes, which she actually bought at the grocery store and that was about it. I mean, it wasn't any, it had a couple dips. I mean, it wasn't anything fancy. We probably spent a total of $350. And I have my receipts, by the way, always keep your receipts because those are in kind contributions to the places you're doing these fundraiser for. So that's my last little thing I have to do is turn in my uh, in kind contribution to the Paw Pack. But it was our honor and it was our joy. And it really was a delight to see people engaging for the first time. Um, one of my favorite politicians in Arkansas has a very true and real line. Um, his name's Chris Jones, he ran for governor last cycle. And he always pointed out, Arkansas is not actually a red state. Arkansas is a non-voting state. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons why we are a red state and a non-voting state is people get caught up in this notion of very partisan, very polarizing politics. When most of, most of us live in the middle and when you engage people and bring them into your tent and invite them along for the journey, they realize it's not so scary. It's not so weird. It's not so awkward. It's real. It's humans talking to humans and humans supporting other humans. And the last thing that we want to talk about 
before because we're going we're going to be pushing an hour here is uh we want to make sure that we we talk about your website and how people uh can work with that website access it and um uh, and and the uh i'm going to try to pull it up here and this is not going to look good folks um <laughs> it always pulls up more than what i want it to pull up but i'm going to go to good change good change uh, that app yeah uh, i'm going to do this as we go along so here is the here's the ugly screenshot the screen share that nobody wants to know about so here we go i i, I got went god change there i say god change that's uh, we're just good change we're not capable of god change <laughs> there i think it is right there yes that's it that's us and there's the website right there Yes, that's it. So if people want to get started, all they have to do is click that get started button uh, to be a candidate or organization raising money on good change. You hit fundraiser right there. If you want to start your campaign, you say what you are. Um, there is no cost to sign up. There are no monthly fees. Um, it's only transaction fees. And I'd love to talk to somebody about that whenever if they're interested. Anybody who's interested anytime, it's free to try. Um, like I said, we're really focused on customer success and customer service, both. Those are two separate things. And so that's why we only make money off transaction fees. So we only have any success at all after the organizations that we are honored to serve have success. Yeah. Um, and there's no sneaky back end fees or anything else. It is a one time upfront, very clear fee. Um, and once you raise money on good change, your money goes directly to your digital wallet. You can deposit it in your bank account, or you can sign up any vendor, any staff person, any consultant. Um, you sign up anybody there. Those individuals get free wallets. It's also connected to their bank account. Don't worry, we have bank grade security. We have cyber security. We're covered. And from there, you can move up to a million dollars wallet to wallet in real time at no cost. And we're seeing really wonderful results. So for example, how that closed loop Venmo system is used is um, there's a caucus, I won't name names. There was a caucus doing a big fundraiser in February and they made their standard event form on another platform. That was great. We're not the jealous type. We never insist that anybody leave their current platform to come to us. Um, they typically do that naturally, but it's because they see that we have better services. But you can use it two services in tandem if that's what you want to do. Another tool in the toolbox. That's how we advertise ourselves. But anyways, this ca this caucus filled out its normal event form. They were raising money that way. That was great. I made a quick phone call though to the head of the caucus and I said, "Hey, don't forget that every candidate who has a wallet on Good Change can send you money wallet to wallet, and you're not going to pay those processing fees that you're using by using that event form." And so after about 15 candidates sent their money wallet to wallet at no cost, all that transaction fees, instead of using that event form, led to two extra sponsorships they weren't even planning on. Because ACH and wire fees, banking fees drive me nuts, used to drive me nuts as a fundraiser. And so there's no reason to do that when we have wallets and easy money movement these days. Modern banking solutions really open up windows and opportunities for campaigns. Um, so that, that's my little commercial on the wallets. I, I think it's really going to be a great future and, um, the completely free mo money movement, especially the money movement to your bank for free, just those nickel and dime fees that other platforms have, they used to just drive me nuts, especially right. to Scott's point with compliance, because it never matched out. So, um, we're just happy to serve. We're happy to offer new tools and resources and, um, honored to have anybody on who wants to try it out. All I have to do is hit get started or go to help, fill out a, um, hit the contact us button, fill out a request for a demo. I'm here to help. No, Emily, we I'm so you. proud of you and Becky and the work that you're doing. And you're, you're, you're making working in politics more accessible. And, and you're taking away some of the mystery and the fear. And so I just want to let you know, I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, not just because I love your business model, but because I think that there is a, a long term gain to be had uh, in the way that you all are thinking about things for campaigns. So all best wishes. And it was great Thank to see you this morning. 
Thank you, Scott. I'm honored. Thank you. Yeah, it really was an honor to have you on Coffee with Democrats. And um, as we as we go through here again, I'm going to re remind the the uh, listeners we're going to have some really good information. I think it's going to be that way on uh, on our credits when it comes up next. So uh, we're going to provide the website. We're going to provide the contact information, and we want people to please utilize that information. They are in business, and they and the only way they stay in business is with your business. So. Um, Please, uh, please join in and, and, and uh, utilize their services. I think it's a great tool. I think it's something that everything I've, I've watched and listened to from you guys from Saturday, what, I mean, it, it's just like I'm a sponge. I'm absorbing every bit of it that I can possibly get my hands on because there's so much here to learn and so much to distribute because we got to share this information with so many people throughout Oklahoma and throughout, you know, all of America People are excited about running for office and exciting to being part of this, you know, um, uh, our 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 government and uh, through politics. And it's it, they need uh, you, you need some guidance, and that's what this the service is all about. So I'm going to turn it over to Emily for some last words of encouragement, and then we'll we'll end this. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. And again, it's an honor. And to anybody who's considering running for office, um, these are my final like fundraising tips for you. Uh, you know, when you run for office, you're anybody can do it. You can do it. And when you do, you ask people for three things. You ask people for their time, their vote and their treasure. Their time is something they're dying with. Their vote is something other people have died for. Both are sacred and non-renewable resources. Their treasure I mean, we're all real close to winning that next lottery billion dollars, right? It's a renewable resource. It's nothing to be shy about. And every gift is a gift. And it's wonderful to include people. So please don't be shy. Don't be scared. Get out there. Take the leap. We need you. Oh, man, that was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Thank you, Emily. That was just, that was, uh, Emily got an Emmy on that one. So thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> no, it's genuine. I mean, I I really care. And I'm I'm always inspired. And that's, that's the wonderful part. I mean, that's that's the greatest gift Becky and I have is talking to people all over Alaska, Iowa, North Dakota, Vermont, Oklahoma, and hearing wonderful stories of humans who care and are inspired to lead. I mean, we're really the ones who are always inspired. So if, if you see anything, it's just a mirror back. Well, again, thank you, uh, Emily, for coming on Coffee with Democrats. Please extend our, our greatest uh, thanks and and um, appreciation to Becky as well. Yeah. You guys are welcome on Coffee with Democrats anytime. We may be extending more of these these conversations out to you as we move along. And again, to the listeners, please share. We need we need to share this information with as many people as we can. Fundraising is that necessary evil, and it's not evil. It's something that is necessary. We've got to make sure that that our candidates that we want to be to represent us. Uh, get there, but the only way they get there is through the funds that we get, the treasure that we own. We have to be able to share that as well. So again, join us on uh, Twitter Live, Facebook Live, and YouTube Live. You can, again, YouTube Live is at Coffee with Democrats 7998. Facebook is Coffee with Democrats, and Twitter Live is at Coffee with Dems. And I'll provide those links also in the credits that are following this. Everybody, thank you for joining us on Coffee with Democrats. And uh, we've got a full slate this week. We're going to have another Coffee with Democrats presentation or conversation tomorrow and another one on um, on Thursday. So awesome. we've got great candidates that are coming on Coffee with Democrats. We're really going to uh, push the candidates very hard this year. And we want to make sure that uh, that everybody uh, enjoys this. We've got uh, next week, we've got a candidate that's coming on here that I'm really over the moon talking about Jane George out of Tennessee. Uh, we really need to help her and the, and the folks in Tennessee just as much as we need to help the people right here in Oklahoma where we live. So thanks for being on Coffee with Democrats. And until the next time, please be safe.